Hi everyone, I'm Zifan Nan from NC State University. Today I'm going to talk about my paper, Hising Human Learning Inspired Natural Language Programming. When you see this title, you might have two questions. Why do you work on natural language programming? And how it is inspired by human learning? Now let's start with the first natural language programming question. The natural language programming refers to the situation that the code synthesizer should automatically produce programming code based on the natural language input from users. For example, in air travel information domain, if the user provides the English query that, I want to find a flight from Raleigh to Sacramento, the code synthesizer should be able to automatically generate the desired code, which can query the correct result from the air travel information system. So why do we need natural language programming? We can look at the question from two perspectives. From the perspective of general users who have no knowledge about coding, if they want to control a device of a smart home, such as turn on the light, or they want to get some information of a flight, the most convenient way for them is to speak their needs to a virtual assistant with natural language. Then from a professional programmer's perspective, in many popular programming language or programming tools, there are a large number of APIs, which is hard for programmers to remember them all with details. For example, the ST measure in LLVM has 505 APIs, and TensorFlow has more than 500 tensor manipulation operations. For programmers, it will take a while for them to adopt these new languages. And even after they get familiar with these languages, they still need to refer to the document to check the details. When they search inside the document, they still use natural language to describe their needs. Therefore, natural language programming can help them take the APIs and relieve the burden from memorizing many APIs with details. However, Developing a programming language tool is difficult. The most popular existing natural language programming approaches are data-driven approaches. These approaches always rely on labeled input code pairs as training data, and it always requires a large number of them. For example, an RNN model that generates batch script uses more than 5,000 training data, and a GNN model that generate Panda data frame manipulation APIs that use six mailing training cases. Acquiring such large data sets take huge effort from developers. However, when I'm looking at those methods, there is always a doubt in my mind. I never write code by reading millions of code. Then how do I program? When I'm programming in an unfamiliar domain, if I need to check what APIs could I use, I will check the API documentation. And then I will follow the grammar and write the corresponding code. How can I achieve this programming approach? The most important thing is I can understand the API descriptions inside the documentation and compare them with the function I need. Then, can we bring this method to program synthesizer? The answer is yes. Inspired by this idea, we propose HiSync, a human learning inspired synthesizer which is driven by natural language understanding. The synthesizer is built on understanding the description of APIs and the user intentions. By comparing the information in both sides, Hising can directly find the related APIs from the document and organize them by following the grammars. Therefore, the most significant feature of Hising is it requires no training data. Then, how does Hising achieve this natural language understanding driven approach? Let's take a look at this framework. 
The framework of Hisin includes three components. The domain knowledge constructor is designed to understand the description of APIs and translate them into domain knowledge. It will extract the key information in the API description and it will also transform the grammar into a graph representation. The front end is designed to understand the natural language queries from users and translate the essential information into an intermediate representation. The back end then synthesizes the code using the information in both intermediate representation and domain knowledge. Now let's look at the details of the framework to see three main features of Python. The first main feature is deep natural language understanding. By taking more than NLP as the first order tool, Python automatically built up the intermediate representation of queries and the knowledge base of APIs, extract the key information inside this natural language sentence, and preparing the foundation for synthesizer to work on. The second feature of Python is the cross domain extensibility. Inspired by more than inspired by how more than compilers deal with programming language varieties, the front end produces a unified intermediate representation for arbitrary domains, and the back end oper operates on this in intermediate representation to generate the desired code. Since the input of front end is always the general natural language, neither the front end nor the back end requires changes across domains. Then, for the domain-specific elements, Hyson encapsulates them into a separate module. Then, for new domains, the developer only needs to extend the specific module by providing new API documentations and no changes needed for the Hyson framework itself. The third feature of Hyson is the graph-based synthesis algorithm. By taking the intermediate representation and the domain knowledge as input and representing the grammar as a graph, the back end of Hyson maps the key information in queries to the APIs in the graph and finds the path to connect them, gradually translating the natural language into the desired code expression. Now, let's use an example to illustrate the synthesis process. The example is from the air travel information system domain. The query is, I would like to find the cheapest flight from Baltimore to Atlanta. Before the synthesis process starts, the domain knowledge constructor will build the knowledge base offline. First, it will transform the grammar into the grammar graph. The elements in grammar, such as the non terminals, the terminals, and the production rules, they all have their corresponding node type. Then the constructor will convert the API documentation into the API knowledge by using NLP to extract the key information in the description. When receiving this user query, the front end of Hising will use natural language processing to parse the original sentence. The parsing result contains many important syntactic and semantic information, such as part of speech, the dependency relations, and the name entities, etc. Then we prune out the unimportant words such as pronouns or the auxiliaries and leave the main information inside a tree structure. This tree structure is called the dependency graph, which is the unified intermediate representation. This graph contains the most important key information in queries, and it will guide the synthesis process in the back end. Then, the dependency graph and also the knowledge base will be taken as the input of the backend. The first step of backend is the semantic mapping, which aims to find all the APIs that are related with the key information inside the queries. So, for each node on the dependency edge, 
Python will find a list of APIs whose description is semantically related to the word inside the node. After finding all the related APIs, at this time, the code we want to generate should meet the following two conditions. First, it must contain one of APIs from each node, because the code needs to cover all the key information. The second, it must contain the unmapped APIs as less as possible, because it should cover the unmentioned information as less as possible, because this information are not mentioned inside the original user queries. Then, on the grammar graph, the synthesis problem becomes find a subgraph in the grammar graph that covers one API node from each dependency node and it contains minimum API nodes. The following steps are designed to find such subgraphs. First, we transform the original dependency graph by replacing the node with the mapped APIs. The transform the dependency graph will guide the search process. For each dependency age, by locating APIs inside the grammar graph from the child node to the parent node, we do a reverse path search on the grammar graph to find all the paths that can connect these two APIs. This path will be taken as candidate paths for that dependency age. This is a set of example paths found in the grammar graph. Each age is corresponding to one dependency age inside the dependency graph. And the next step is to combine this path into a code generation tree. The dependency graph is also used to guide the combination process. We combine the candidate paths of each dependency age with the bottom-up order. These are two kind of age relations inside the dependency graph. The relation of age 2 and 4 is the parent and child relation. To combine the path of this relation, we only need to attach the child path to the end of the parent path by merging the head and the tail. Another relation of ages are sibling relations, such as age 2 and 3. To combine these two paths, we merge all their common prefixes and get a prefix tree. After getting the path combination result, we will check the grammar and fill all the missing part with the default APIs. For example, the equal departure has five parameters and we only, have a, we, we only have Atlanta as a CD. We will use any as default API to fill the other parameters. And finally, we translate the code generation tree to the code expression by taking out the APIs and following the tree structure. We evaluate Hising on three different domains which also shows its cross-domain extensibility. The text editing domain has 52 APIs with 467 English and DSL code pairs. The ATIS has 51 APIs and 533 test cases, while the AST measure has 505 APIs and 100 test cases. While the AST measure has 505 APIs with 100 test cases. This is the overall accuracy of Hising on three different domains. In text domain and ATIS domain, we compare Hising with a data driven model from others work, which is trained on hundreds of examples. However, the Hising achieves comparable accuracy without any training examples. In AST measure domain, Hising is compared with a domain-specific rule-driven model. The rule cannot cover all the situation in natural language descriptions. Therefore, as shown in the result, Hising achieves better accuracy due to the advantage of natural language understanding 
and the synthesis algorithm. In this page, we show three typical errors of Hisense during the synthesis process. The first error is caused by natural language ambiguity. In the first query, the phrase to Auckland should be part of phrase from Boston to Auckland, but the NLP parser take, take it as part of the verb tell, like tell something to Auckland. This error is caused by nat natural language processing. The second error is caused by passive voice. As shown in query 2, it is followed by actually has the same semantic with before, which is the opposite meaning of follow. But Hyson is not able to figure it out yet, so it only searched the related API with follow, which end up with a different meaning. The third error comes from the case that one English word contains the semantic meaning of two APIs. The prepend here means insert at the start of each line, so it has the semantic of both API insert and API start, while Hysync only maps one API to one keyword, which caused the error. In conclusion, we introduced a natural language understanding-driven code synthesis approach to natural language programming. And we build a cross-domain synthesis framework that takes no training examples. And finally, in our experiment, the Hysync achieves comparable accuracy with data-driven method that trained on hundreds of labeled examples.